everyone. Today is the 12th of September 2021. And truly it is indeed a pleasure for us to be here. It is a privilege more than anything else to be able to be here to worship God. We have not come just because it is something we are accustomed to do, but we have come truly to honor our Heavenly Father because He deserves all the praise, the glory, and the honor that can be ascribed unto His name. And I wish to welcome our entire audience, those who are joining us via the internet. We welcome you to our time of worship today from International Prayer House Ministries at Annesville, St. Vincent. And those in our audience here at the assembly, it is good to be here yet another time. The word of God says it is good for brethren to dwell together in unity. Where two or three are gathered, our God is in the midst. And so as we come today, we know that his presence is here. And so we will behave ourselves as if we understand that God's presence is here with us. We will reverence him and we will worship him in the beauty of holiness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, truly, it is good to be here. We thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for the very breath that you have loaned unto us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for your faithfulness. And as we come this morning, Heavenly Father, we honor you in the name of Jesus. We know that you deserve all the praise that we can ascribe to you today. And so we will worship you as if you deserve our praise. We thank you for all that you have done for us and continue to do for us. We thank you, O oh God, for this day. We do not know what our tomorrows hold, but this day we are grateful for what you have done and we are assured that you will continue to keep us. We want to this morning commit our time of worship into your hands. There are many persons that are involved in our time of worship. And we want to commit each and every one of them into your hands. So we want to commit the worship team into your hands in the name of Jesus. May you minister to them and through them by the power of your Holy Ghost. We pray also for all of our technical operators, O oh God. Be with them. Keep their minds at peace, O oh God. And keep them focused on you. We pray for our musicians, O oh Heavenly Father. Let them continue to play as unto you. Let them know that you are the one who rewards faithfulness. And may their hearts be encouraged today as they play before you, O oh God. We pray for your servant who will bring your word today, O oh God. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. When your word enters, it brings light. So we are praying today as we hear your word that it will cause light to come in every dark areas of our life oh God and we commit all every individual here whether they are playing a leading role or not into your hands oh God we pray that you will minister to needs not only in our local audience here but in our wider audience oh God you know the needs that are represented in all lives. You understand what each person is going through, oh God. And I pray that you will present yourself to each and every one as Jehovah Jireh. For you, oh God, are our provider. That you will present yourself as a shield to them and a defense, oh God. And may all know that you are the one in whom we can and should trust. No other is God. You alone are God. You are high 
and highly exalted. So we worship you today and we give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Bless the Lord. Truly our God is good. And his mercies endure forever. It is good to be here. No matter what has transpired, what has taken place in our lives, it is good to be here. And we will worship the Lord today as if we know that it is good. But as usual, I want to just encourage us with a passage of scripture before we go into our time of worship today, it is taken from Exodus chapter 15. And I'll read the first three verses. It reads as follows. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his riders are he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare an habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And so we want to honor the Lord. Just as Moses and the children of Israel sang as they got victory, as they approached their Red Sea situations, be encouraged today that our God shall see us through our Red Sea situations. It is my honor and privilege as usual to really introduced to your worship team and I, I just want you to appreciate the sacrifice that they make and the effort that they make and that we will truly worship God as we are led by our worship team this morning. Please receive our worship team. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand before our God this morning, saints of God. Help me worship God this morning. Let us welcome the Holy Spirit in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name, Lord. Father, we praise you, Lord. We exalt you this morning. We exalt you. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name this morning, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, our King of kings and our Lord of lords. Help me worship God this morning, saints of God. Our God is here this morning. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we bless your holy name, mighty God. We exalt you this morning, Lord. We welcome your spirit with us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are great this morning. And we worship you, mighty God. We exalt you this morning, our King. We cannot do anything without you, Lord. We need you more and more, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Bless your holy name, Jesus. As we lift our hands before you this morning, as we stand and lift our hands before you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord. Now, how 
We serve a God who is mighty. Almighty God, this morning we praise you. We praise you this morning. Hallelujah. All the other gods, they are the works of men, but you are the most high God. There is none like you. All the other gods, all the other gods, they are the works of men, but you are the most high God. There is none like you. Jehovah, you are the most high. 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 Holy are the gods. Holy are the gods. They are the works of men, but you are the most high. for being our daddy. Thank you for being our everything this morning. Hallelujah. This morning by his stripes, we are healed. By his nail-paced hand, we are free. This morning, 
Hallelujah. Help me worship God for that this morning. Without him, we could not have been here. Oh, hallelujah. He has won our victory. This morning, saints of God, he went on that cross and nailed his hands and his foot for us. For saving us. For giving us eternal life. Hallelujah. Take that opportunity this morning. Take that opportunity this morning, saints of God. Don't leave that Lord, our Lord's side. Let us encamp. Let us ask God to encamp around us. Ask Him not to leave us because we cannot do anything without our God this morning. We need God more than ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
serve a God who is not dead, but he is alive and well this morning. And we could look to him. We could take our burdens to him this morning, saints of God, because he is no longer in the grave, but he is up high above us, waiting on us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. of everything this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for being at the center of it all this morning. Thank you, Lord. I say thank you and hallelujah and glorify your name for being at the center, God, this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. At the center of it all Is you that I see at the center of it all is you that I see is you that I see there is power in his name.
Welcome to you, our speaker, none other than our own Pastor Michael says. Please receive it. Praise God. Thank you very much, Brother Chris. It is indeed a privilege and a pleasure to be in the house of God today. Amen. You see, sometimes we, we take things for granted because we do them so often but there are many people all around the world today who are in lockdown they're not able to go to the house of God there are many people who haven't seen their their friends and their family in over a year there are many people who who cannot travel about freely in their own country and so when we say it is a privilege and a pleasure to be in God's house, it is something that we should understand, that we should take note of. There are many people who are sick. There are many persons who, for so many other reasons, cannot be in God's presence. But you are here this morning. Amen. So give God some praise that you are alive. Give God some praise that you are well. Give God some praise that you are in his presence. That you can lift your hands. That you can worship. That you can exalt his holy name. That truly God has been a great God to you. That he is an amazing God and an amazing king. And so when I ask you the question, are you happy to be in God's house this morning? Amen. Because for so many other reasons, we may not have been here, but for his grace and his mercy, which have been new every morning, great has been his faithfulness towards us. And so God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today and we say thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your strength and your favor this morning. 
thank you for being oh god right here right now in our midst your word said oh god where two or three are gathered in your name you are in the midst of bless god and the word bless oh god in biblical terms means to impart or ask for supernatural and divine favor and so in the name of Jesus, we call upon you, O oh God, that even as you are in our midst, as we have been gathered in your name, that you bless us as your people in the name of Jesus. Impart supernatural and divine favor upon us as your people. And we say thank you for doing this, O oh God. And God, we bless you with our worship. We bless you with our praise. We bless you, O oh God, as we lift our voices. And even now, O oh God, as we are about to go into the word, we bless you, O oh God, with our ears and our hearts. Thank you for all that you've done and everything that you're doing in our lives. And we glorify you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may have your seats if you can. Glory be to God. God is indeed a great, big, wonderful God. We thank God for life and thank God for everyone who was able to make it out today. We thank God for everything that he has been doing in our own personal lives, in the ministry, and in the lives of so many people all around the world. We give God thanks for that. Amen? I want us to turn to the book of Ephesians Chapter 6. And there's a scripture verse that has been pounding in my head for the last week or more. And I believe God is, is saying something to us. That you would like to share with us from the word of God. Amen. I'm reading from the New International Version. And the Bible says, reading from verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father and mother. Which is the first commandment with a promise. So that it may go well with you. And that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Amen. Now I say, God, you want me to speak to some big hardback men and women about children obeying their parents in the Lord. And God said, yes. And so today we're going to be speaking about the relationship, amen, between the parent and the child. When we read this particular passage, and it is one that we share a lot with our children, one of the first things that we, we try to use it, especially with, with Christian children, children who grew up in the household of faith, is to remind them to be obedient or to do what we tell them to do. And so we very often use the, the passage that says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And because if you do that, you will experience a blessing. The Bible says it will go well with you. And also, in addition to it going well with you, you will have a long life. And one of the things that we all want, or especially if things are going well with us, is to have a long life. Now, if you're not doing too good and things are hard and you're not, you're not feeling good all of the time and things are always going bad with you, sometimes we don't necessarily want to have a long life. What we're looking for is for things to improve. But the Bible says that children must obey your parents in the Lord if you want to have a good life and you want to have an experience, a long life. 
And so every day of our lives as parents, we speak this to our children. We tell them how important it is for them to be obedient. How important it is for them to listen to us and to do what we say and what we tell them. But if you are a parent, you know and you understand that this is a very big struggle in the life of every single family. To have your children be obedient to your word. Now, there may be one or two children, amen, who they just try to do their best. And so you have in your household, you may have one child who, if you say, go down the road and buy ABC, they'll go down the road and buy ABC. Amen? Like nobody have those kind of children? Because you're looking at me like, wait, will you find that child there? But generally, we tend to find that there are also children who you may have to tell them one time, two times, three times, four times, and after the fifth time, they still haven't gone. I remember growing up when my parents spoke to me and you tried to be defiant. Amen? You know what I mean. You, your, your mom is in the other room or your dad is in the other room and they shout and say, come go to the shop and buy some bread or something. And you're there for an, a whole minute you haven't moved. And when you hear them shake or they open the door to come, you are halfway to the shop. Because you knew that within your heart that your life depended on you not being there when they came out of that room. Amen? The ones who are above 30 will understand what I'm saying. And then... There was this thing that we had, especially in our culture, that said children are supposed to be seen and not heard. So if you are there and your parents are visitors and they're having a discussion, you may know what they're talking about. You may understand what you're talking about. They may, they may even be saying something wrong. But you didn't dare open your mouth to correct your parents. No, mommy, that's not how it goes. Is one of two things was going to happen there. You were going to wake up tomorrow and then know how you went to sleep because somebody knocked you out. Or if you had one of those parents who were a little more gentle, you would get the look. And that look told you that later was not going to be greater. Somebody was going to get heated up in this place when the guests went home. And guess who that was? You. And so a lot of the times we grew up in our culture where children learn to be silent. Where children learn to be obedient. Not because you necessarily wanted to be obedient, but because you knew and understood very well the consequences of your disobedience. The rod was not going to be spared. Amen. Amen. For you, the Bible said, spare the rod and spoil the child. And that was practiced, believe me, in just about every household that I know of. Sometimes I'm speaking to my friends and I said, you know, I didn't get that many, that many strokes as, as a child growing up. I tried to be as obedient as possible. You know, my dad isn't here. <laughs> Amen? But my sisters, they know that it's true, mostly. But sometimes I would hear my friends speaking about when it came time to, to receive what was called the rod of correction. Now in, they, in these days, the rod of correction might be your hand. You might just get two spanks or two cub, and that was that. But in those days, the rod of correction was anything that was near your parent when it was time to correct you. So some people found the broomstick. Some people found the belt. Some people found a slipper, and some people actually found a rod. You ever been told to go outside by the guava tree and, and pick a branch 
and clean it off and bring it for them. And you know fully well exactly what they're going to do with this branch. In some cultures, they, they call that abuse. But in our culture, it was, it was the norm. That's how we grew up. And so today, what we see is that there's been a move in a way from what has been the norm for us as parents growing up. And so what we have seen now in our society is the consequences of that moving away from what we have experienced or what we have been accustomed to as our culture, as we have sought to adopt cultures from other people. And so, whereas our parents only had to speak one time, now we have situations where as parents, you're speaking so many times till you end up doing it yourself because the child still didn't move. I hope that's not happening in anybody's home. But we're still in the Caribbean, amen? But we are seeing some of that. And so we have children today who are growing up in defiance of their parents. And we have children today who are not being obedient to their parents because they have not been taught how to be obedient to your parents. I remember as we grew up, you know, your parents had this look and you knew exactly what that look meant. Today you try practicing the look on your children and they're looking back at you the same way. It's like, it's, what's wrong, mom? Something in your eye? They don't understand because we have not taught them. And so we have a society of young people that are growing up that are defiant. A society of young people that are growing up that do not understand the value and the importance of being obedient to their parents. But I want to share something with us. As a parent, especially of teenage children, what you tend to find is that as they get a little older and their knowledge ex increases, they tend to think and feel that they know sometimes more than you do. And so you have to try to remind them that you have been this road before. And you would hear the response, yeah, but th that was the old time way. But the reality is, in a lot of cases and a lot of instances, the things that the values that we were taught helped to shape us as a society and to bring us to where we are. The values that we were taught help us to be successful, to have a drive to be successful. The values that we were taught enable us to learn manners and behavior so that when we went out in public, we would know how to act. Today we go out and we, you see some young people and they may be doing something wrong and you try to correct them and say, son, daughter, you shouldn't do that. And they curse you. And then you may make the mistake and go to their parents and say, imagine I try to correct your son and tell him this, and you get cursed again. What you trouble my child for is not your business. And so more and more we are hearing adults and other people saying in society that even if they see your child doing something wrong, they leave them. And so whereas we grew up with our community helping to, to raise and instill values in our children, our children are now growing up in a community that doesn't care about them, that looks the other way. Your children doing drugs? Somebody, okay, that's, that's Miss Mary's son. Good for her and him. She'll figure it out someday. And then poor Miss Mary's son coming home every day and she's thinking that she has an angel. And one day he gets arrested or shot and she's saying, and you hear it all the time in the news, I don't know how that happened. But the entire society could tell you exactly how it happened. It is because the values were not instilled in our children. 
The Bible says that as children, you are supposed to obey your parents in the Lord. And the reason for this is that from the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb, a relationship started between you and your mom. It was one in which you were, de you were dependent on her for your sustenance, for everything, basically. Your umbilical cord connected you to your mom. You received every inch and every ounce of nourishment from that. A relationship was started. And God's intention was that for that relationship to continue until death. A relationship where you are connected to your children and your children are connected to you. And so for many parents, when they see their children not going along, I'm not saying that they're trying to make their children out to be something that they're not. But for many parents, when you see your children and you're trying to help them to make better choices, to not make the same mistakes that you made, that you had to learn some lessons the hard way. But they are bent on doing their own thing and doing things their own way and learning the hard way. It is hard for you as a parent to sit back and watch your child walking off a cliff and know that they're going to get hurt and not do anything about it because you are connected to them. Parents, you know what I'm speaking about. But sometimes as children, you think and you feel that your parents don't want you to have any fun. That they don't want you to have any experiences. That they don't want you to do this or they don't want you to do that. And, you, and we often hear children say, I need to learn on my own and I need to learn and make my own mistakes. And that is true. Sometimes you will do that. Because your journey may be different than your parents'. But if you're doing similar actions, you will have similar consequences. And if your parents are identifying that you're doing some things that they did that brought about some negative consequences in their lives, it is their job and it is their duty to try to help you and to correct you. Just as it is your duty to obey your parents in the Lord. And one of the reasons for this the Bible says in verse 4, fathers do not exasperate or do not provoke your children to anger. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. One of our jobs as parents is to instruct our children in the things that are good, in the things that are lovely, in the things that are beautiful, in the things that help them and help to mold them into people who would have a positive impact in our society. Into children who become adults that can be successful in whatever area or field they may choose to do. Into our children who become adults who are manly and know how to have respect for those in authority. Parents, we are to bring up our children in the instruction, in the fear of the Lord. In other words, as long as they are with you, your job is to teach them. Your job is to help them. Your job is to provide for them. Your job is to encourage them. Your job is to support them. And it is important in this relationship that both Sides, the parent and the children know exactly what their job and their functions are. Our relationship changes as we get older, but our relationship should never be broken. In other words, as a child is in the womb, they are dependent, and so they depend on you for everything. But as a child grows, you must teach them to be independent. So that eventually your young men will know how to be men in their own homes. Your young women will know how to be ladies in their own homes. 
And as they get older and they become independent and they're able to do things on their own, and you may be needed less physically, there comes a time when, they, when, you, are, when you become codependent on each other. In other words, your child now gets to a stage where they're able to impart into your life. I'm not necessarily speaking about the, 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 the train of thought that says, you know, you have children so that they can come back and take care of you for the rest of your life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm speaking about a relationship where you can now have fellowship, where you can sit and talk, where you can exchange ideas, where you can exchange opinions, where you can value each other's presence and company and instruction in your life. That happens as you get older. And in some cases, as parents, when you get much older, you now become dependent on your children. I know growing up, you always hear people say they want to ensure that they have some girl children. And they say the reason for this is because when your boys get married and they move away, you don't see them again. But if you have daughters and you get old and you get sick, your daughter will generally be the one to come around and take care of you. But I'm praying for some grace and mercy because I only have sons. So I have to be strong, amen? So pray for some strength. Amen? Because I don't want in my old age, amen, if the Lord tarries and I'm 150 or thereabout and start to, you know, get a little slow, that my son's saying that I'm too busy to, you know, to pass and check on you. But the point I'm making is that we need to have a relationship with our children. It is not just for us to expect that their job is for them to be obedient to everything that we say. And it is not just their job to think that we are only here to provide for their every woman need. But God wants us to have a relationship with each other. One where we are able to instruct and they're able to learn. One where we are able to provide and they're able to use what we have provided as a stepping stone for their own growth and development. But the question we may ask ourselves this morning is, what does this have to do with our relationship with God? You see, in the Bible, God has been referred to as our Father. Throughout the entire New Testament and the Old Testament, God is referred to as our Father. And as I prepared for this particular message and this particular verse came up, children obey your parents in the Lord, a lot of the times when I'm speaking to my own children and they, they're frustrating the life out of me because I haven't mastered the look and the belt as much as I should have, I regret that now. Amen. So if you're a young parent, don't do like me. Amen. Light them up and light them up often. Tell them, Pastor Mike, say so. You know, your parents used to have a way, especially your mom. When you were getting licks, she would be speaking. And you were hoping that she had a very short conversation with you. Because every time she said, remember what I tell you about this and that and that and this. And you were just hoping for her to get to the end of whatever it is she's trying to say. Because every time she says something, it's another stroke. Amen. But you see, what God is saying, I want you to have a relationship with your children. So it is not always about beating them into submission. Nor is it about, as children, being dependent on your parents that you think and feel that their only job and task is to provide for you for the rest of your life. It is about having a relationship. And God was saying to me that a lot of the times, the same frustration that we experience when we are trying to speak to our children and trying to get them to be obedient to us because we know that they're falling off a cliff and we can see the cliff coming and we are trying our best to prevent it. That's exactly how he feels. When he is speaking to us and telling us to do something and we haven't been doing it. There are times in our walk with God. That God has been speaking to us one time, two times, three times, 
four times, five times, and we are still not doing the thing that he is telling us to do. God is saying the same way sometimes you feel so disappointed, so hurt by the fact that you have to speak to your children so many times is the same way that he feels having to, to instruct us in the same thing over and over and over again. I thank God that he is a patient God. I thank God that he is a God of grace. Because had it not been for the grace of God, many of us, myself included, would not be here today. You see, when you come into God's presence, it is not just about seeing him as God Almighty who is so far away. He wants us to see the relationship that he has with us as a parent to a child. And in this case, we are the children. And in this relationship, God is saying, I want, to, I want to have fellowship with you. But I want you to understand that I know more than you. That I created you and I understand everything about you. And so when I give you instruction, whether it is in the word of God, to tell you not to do something, or when I tell you to do something and you don't do it, it is not because I want to hurt you. It is not because I want to punish you. It is not because I want to prevent you from having some fun in your life. It is because I understand the consequences of the things that you are doing. And I want you to have a good life. I want you to have a long life. I want you to have a life of blessing and prosperity. You see, in the Bible there, in the book of Deuteronomy, they list so many blessings for obedience to the word of God. The Bible says you'll be blessed in your home and blessed in the street. The fruit of your labor will be blessed. Your home will be blessed if you obey the word of God. It is the same thing that the Bible is saying here when it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for it is right. And if you honor your parents, then it will go well with you. If you do what God is saying to, for us to do, then he's saying it will go well with you. And so sometimes we have so many things going wrong in our lives, and we're looking for the devil to blame. We're looking for our neighbor to blame. Oh, somebody put their mouth on me. When the only thing that has been going wrong is that God has been speaking to us and we have not been listening. Well, you can be silent. I know it's true. Because I know it for myself. See, God wants us to have a relationship with him. And he's saying that your relationship with me started even before your mother conceived you. Even before you were in your mom's womb. I knew you. And even before you were born, I started to clear the way for your blessing in your life. But all I'm asking is for you to be obedient. So that when I say to you, don't go to the right because I know there's a lion waiting there to devour you. That you would not go to the right because the right looks good in your own eyes. All I want you to do is listen a little more. Be a little more obedient. That's what God is saying. I need you to understand the relationship that I want to have with you. It is not one to prevent you from having fun. It is not one to prevent you from experiencing some of the things of life. But it is one that wants to work everything out together for your good. It is one that seeks your blessing. That seeks every good thing for you. 
It is one that wants to bring you to maturity so that you wouldn't just be drinking milk all of the days of your life. Not understanding the word of God. Not understanding the concepts and the precepts that God is trying to teach. But that we can get to a place where we begin to eat meat. Get to a place where we grow up and become mature. And when we have children of our own, we would then be able to instill some of these values and principles in their lives. You know, when I was growing up, my dad was a pastor as I grew up. We had to go to church whenever church was open. And I remember even in my teen years, I was in church Sunday morning, Sunday evening. There was Bible study on Tuesday. There was Barnabas ministry on Monday. There was men's meeting on Wednesday. There was prayer meeting on Thursday. There was the drama group on Friday. And there was young people on Saturday. That was my life. And for a season, I hated it because as far as I looked out, everything else was happening out there. And I was in church. Some of you young people go in church one or twice a week. And you feel like, Lord of mercy, mommy church again this Sunday. Think about going seven days a week. And I remember on top of that, every single morning at 6 a.m., regardless of what time you came in last night, if you went out liming, or regardless of what time you went to bed, if you were looking at television, at 6 a.m. every morning was devotion time in the house. Sunday to Sunday. Yes, you're going to church, but you're going to have devotion first. But it instilled within me some values and some principles that even today in my life, if I do otherwise, it doesn't sit well in my spirit. You see, and so when the Bible said to parents that you should bring up your child or train them up in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they will not depart from it. I'm not saying that you, your children are going to be pastors or they're going to be in the church ministering, but I'm saying that you will help them to have a relationship with God. Because I'll tell you something, in the world that we are living in today, if you do not have a relationship with God, your goose is cooked. Because things will happen to you that doctors cannot explain in this life. Situations may come up where you don't understand and none of your friends can help you or talk you through it. No counselor can help you through it. There are times in your life when you will feel lonely even if you're in the midst of a crowd of people. But regardless of how high you will ever go, in life, how low you will ever find yourself, your relationship with God will always enable you to remain grounded. And it will help you to find your way home when you are struggling. There are times where you will come to the brink of falling off, but God will be able to pull you back. There are times when nobody in the world can help you and the word of God will just come back into your spirit. Spirit, and you would know that you know that you know that God has still got you regardless of what is going on and parents it is important for us to teach those values to teach the word of God to our children ensure that your children grow up having a relationship with God 
a lot of our young people today who are children who are parents will tell you that they grew up in church and they you would hear time and time again oh i know i have a praying grandmother and because of my praying grandmother she has helped me through a lot of situations but one day your grandmother is going to pass away and you are going to be the grandmother of your children's children who will pray for them if you don't even know how to pray for yourself today who will pray for your children when your mom goes on to the great beyond that's what we need to think about it is all good that you have a pair praying mother it is all good that you have a praying grandmother but your children need to have a praying mother too and your grandchildren will need a praying grandmother and guess whose duty that is it is yours and not because I'm saying mother doesn't mean that I'm not speaking to the fathers either I'm speaking to the fathers too we cannot expect to raise godly children if we are still depending on our grandparents and great grandparents prayers to cover them because sooner or later God will take them home and then who will pray for you if you have not learned to pray for yourself and who will pray for your children if you have not learned to pray for yourself that's why the world that we are seeing today is so messed up that is why there's so much greed and envy and malice and strife it is because we have not learned to pray we have not learned to cultivate our relationship with God we are still dependent on our parents prayers we are still dependent on our grandparents prayers and we have not learned to pray for ourselves who will pray for your children and who will teach your children to pray if you cannot do it for yourself today God said before I formed you I knew you And I said to your parents that I want you to bring up this child that God is blessing you with in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And so when your parents, as, as young people, your parents are trying to tell you about God, when they're trying to get you to come into the household of God, when they're trying to teach you values and principles, it is for your own good. The Bible says so that it may go well with you but you have your part to play. You have to learn to be obedient. Just like we as parents have to, have to learn to be obedient to the voice of God in our lives. You need to learn to be obedient to the voice of your parents in your life. You see, it is easier to understand the relationship that you have or that God wants you to have with Him if you understand your role as a child and your role as a parent. It's unfortunate that the way our society goes or the way life goes is that some of the things that we, that we learn, we learn them or we understand them when we are so much older and we often wish that we can impart that knowledge to the younger generation we often wish we can say to them don't do this son, don't do this daughter it's not worth it it may look like something good now but it's not worth it we often wish we can say to them Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We wish we can tell them, go to church more. 
Read your Bible more. Pray more. Develop your relationship with God because through it all, if you learn to trust in Jesus and you learn to trust in God, through it all, if you learn to depend upon His Word, when difficult times come, you will be able to make it through because you know that you know that you know that God has got you. And so parents today, let us teach our children in the ways of God. Parents today, let us learn to pray for ourselves so that we can teach our children how to pray. Parents today, let us take our children to the house of God so that they can see us lifting our hands in worship and not think that it is strange. I remember growing up, aside from our, our family devotion, and so I would, I would hear my my, my mom in, in particular praying and sometimes she'd be praying in tongues for hours. And I didn't always understand what she was doing until I got, er, I, I got a little older and I understood that she was interceding on behalf of her children. I remember her saying to me, I remember as a young man when I, when I went through my little rebellious phase in the sense that I you know, I wanted to go out so I would go out on a Saturday night and come in late and go to church on Sunday morning I still had to go to church it's up to me if I, if I wanted to come in at 2 o'clock in the morning I was still going to church getting up at 6 to have devotion too amen that wasn't going to stop that but I remember whatever time I came in I would meet my mom sitting in the chair waiting for me I was driving, I was old enough to drive, I had a license, I would take the vehicle and whatever it is. And she would be right there waiting and say, Mom, what are you doing up? She said, because my son is out and I'm praying for him to get home safely. And I firmly believe that her prayers may have spared me from many ills in my own life. From many bad decisions and, and many, many bad things that may have happened to me along the way. When your child goes out today, who prays for them? Who covers them if you don't know how to do it for yourself? A relationship with God is important for us to have and equally important for us to pass on to our children and a relationship with our children is important for us to have that we can teach them that we can share with them not just provide for them but that we can help them to be brought up in the fear and admonition of God if you're a child today are you being obedient to your parents? Do you see the instruction as a burden? Or do you see it as a blessing? That they're teaching you things. Amen? That they're imparting unto you in five minutes something that probably took them an entire year to learn. And they're saving you a year of hardship if you would take five minutes to listen to what they're telling you today. And in our relationship with God, are we listening? Are we, are we spending time in the Word of God? Are we silently spending time in His presence and saying, God, speak to me. Tell me what you want me to do. Tell me where you want me to go. Show me that I may know thy will for my life. Just as your relationship with your children would go with you for the rest of your life, your relationship with God must also take you through this entire journey of your life. But you see, that can't happen if you don't know Him. 
But I have good news for you today. You do not have to go another day without knowing Jesus. And so I want us with our eyes closed this morning to think about all the difficult times that you may have gone through. To think about how many times you didn't know how you were going to make it and God came through for you. And I just want us to be grateful unto God and, and thank Him for that relationship that you may have with Him this morning. Thank Him for speaking to you. Thank Him for, for having your parents or grandparents intercede on your behalf. But I want you to make a decision and a choice today that someday your parents, your children or your grandchildren will be able to call you to call your name and thank God that you are praying for them. But you see, that is not going to happen if you don't have the relationship with God. That is not going to happen if you don't understand and begin to form that relationship with God that you can then impart to your children. And so God is saying, don't just do it for yourself, but do it for your children. You see, it is important for us to understand that because some of us, you can do us anything in this world. You can kill us if you want, but don't ever lay a hand on our children. And God is saying, if you care so much about your children today, then it is time that you have a relationship with me so that you can share that relationship with your children. That you can teach them how to have a relationship with me for themselves. And the blessing can move from one generation to the next. Today I thank God for you. And I want you, even as you're here with your eyes closed, that's between you and God. If you want God to have, you want to have that sort of a relationship with God that you can impart unto your children, just lift your hands this morning. Thank you very much. You can put it down. And if you're here and you're going to make it your business and your duty from this day forward to impart unto your children the teachings of God, that they too can have a blessing in their lives. Lift your hands this morning. That's your promise. That's your pledge. God, I'm going to invest in my children. I'm going to invest in the next generation. You may say, I don't have children, but you may have God children. Invest in them. You may have nieces and nephews. Invest in them. Teach them the godly principles. God has seen your hands today. And your hands have said, God, I recognize the value and the importance of having a relationship with you. And I recognize the value and importance of sharing my relationship with you for the next generation. And so we're going to pray this morning. Father and God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, when Jesus was here, he called you Father because you are his Father. And when he was here, he taught us how to have a relationship with you through prayer, through reading to fast it, to seek it, and to share it. And so God, today we want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We want to develop a relationship for ourselves, and that is why we have lifted our hands. And we want to take it further than that, oh God, and we want to be able to share that relationship with the generation that comes after us. We want to be able to stand in the gap for them when there's no one else who would stand up for them. We want to be able to stand in the gap for our grandchildren. We want to be able to stand in prayer on their behalf, interceding through their difficult times in their life. And God, it starts with our relationship with you. And so today, oh God, we ask that you will mold us and shape us. Give us, oh God, and help us to form, oh God, that relationship with you, that bond, that connection that will take us through our entire life in the good times and in the bad times. 
a relationship where we will learn to trust you, where we will learn to depend upon you, and we will learn, oh God, to be obedient to your will and to your voice in our lives. Thank you for what you have started in our lives today. Bring it to fulfillment. Bring it to fruition in our lives. And thank you for doing this. In Jesus' name we pray. May we learn to be obedient. That it may go well with us. And that we may live long upon the face of the earth. In the blessing of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. You're here this morning and you've been listening. It may seem as a simple message, a simple word. But I want you to understand the value and the importance of having that relationship with God. And the value and importance as children of being obedient to your parents because they're seeking and they're looking out for your best interest. And the more that we learn to obey our parents, it's the easier it becomes for us to, to obey the word of God when he speaks to us. May God continue to bless you and keep you. May he prosper you. May he cause his face to shine upon you wheresoever you go. So that when you are older, more mature in the ways of God, you will never forget what God has instilled in you. You will never forget what your parents have instilled in you. And it will take you through the rest of your life. May the blessing of God be upon you always. Amen.